بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on our study of عقيدة واسطية من شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى we reach the portion of the treaties as in our last درس we're talking about أهل السنة being wasat or moderate compared to the other sects. That Ahl Sunnah holds the creed uh, based on adhering to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and the understanding of the Sahaba and the Tabi'in with Ba'i Tabi'in and those who follow them bi ihsan and the Yawm din So since that's the creed of Ahl Sunnah we need to have uh, some sort of idea about some of the other early sects and some of them still have uh, they still exist, like the Ashaira and the Maturidiya and so forth. They still have a presence, but the effect of the creed of some of these early sects is still with us. Those particular groups, as we said, the Ashaira and Maturidiya, they're still very prevalent in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And some of the other groups, the Jahmiya, Mu'tazila, Qadariya, most of those groups, Alhamdulillah they have disappeared. Their bid'ah, they have disappeared as a sect. However, their bid'ah, some aspects of their bid'ah remains in the ummah that still people uh, hold some of those views. They may have something of the Murjiya creed with regards to Iman. They may not have the correct understanding of Iman, for example. Or they may, some people have uh, some shubahat regarding the Qur'an, they don't, they don't understand that the Qur'an is not makhluk, the Qur'an is not created, and that it's one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine sifat. Or they may fall into one of the other aspects of deviance that those early creeds and sects had, like the Mu'tazila, the Jahmiya, the Mushabiha, and so forth. So I just wanted to give us a very quick picture as we can see, this is the creed regarding Sifat. And as we said, Ahl Sunnah, they take their creed from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, the other groups that we mentioned, we'll just look at a few of these here. Uh, the Mushaga, for example, those people who make Tashbih, they make a resemblance. What it, how do they go astray? This is a, a, a very basic chart about how those creed, creed uh, how those various sects, their creed with regarding to the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Mushabiha, they basically make a resemblance between the Creator and His creature. So they make a resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His creatures. So for example, they say, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands and his hands are like this, or they're like our hands. This is uh, a, a wicked innovation, and this amounts to bid'ah mukaffara, as we mentioned before. This is kind of innovation that takes a person out of the fold of Islam. When they make a resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation, or his creation, and him, tabarak wa ta'ala. But instead, Ahl Sunnah, their belief is that Allah has hands, Allah descends, Allah rolls above his throne. However, the kafiya is majhul. As the madhab of Imam Malik, he, he stated it very clear, clearly, the madhab of, of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, the madhab of the Sahaba, the madhab of the Kitabi Ba'u Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Malik was asked about uh, the sifat of, uh, of Istawa. You know, he, he uh, was teaching a, a lesson and he was explaining to the people, he said, Ar Rahman al Ars Isso. He said that Allah the Almighty, the, the most merciful, uh, rose above his throne. So Imam Malik gave a direct verse from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Isso al Ars more than seven places in the Quran, or seven places in the Quran. There are seven verses where Allah affirms for himself to Barak wa Ta'ala that he uh, rose above his throne. Imam Malik was, was, ex, was explaining that, and then he was asked, you know, Ya Imam, Kaiba Istawa, how does Allah rise above his throne? Imam Malik became very angry. And 
began to sweat as it uh, was mentioned about him. And then he looked up and he said, Al istawa ma'mun, wa kaifiyya majhul, wa su'al anhu a bid'ah. Imam Malik said that asking about this, or he said that um, the kaifiyya how is unknown. But the ascension or that Allah rose above his throne is known. The how, how he does it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is unknown. And to ask about it is a bid'ah, is innovation. It's religious innovation. It's unorthodoxy. Showing the men of, uh, of uh, Ahl-Sunnah wal Jama'ah that we don't ask cave, but we affirm, Imam Malik affirmed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne. He said, al istawa ma'lum. He said that rising is known. It's known that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne. And the meaning in the Arabic language is known. What it means. But then he said, a kaifiya mitchul, but how is, is unknown. Wa su'al anhu bid'ah or Imam Malik, and asking about it is a religious innovation. So Ahlul Sunnah, that's their method. But as we said, the Ahlul Tashbih, the Mushariha, they make a resemblance between Allah and His cre creatures. The Jahmiyyah, the Jahmiyyah, they negate, they negated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine uh, attributes and even the name. So they totally negated the ma'ana because they were afraid of falling into tashbih. So they moved away from making a resemblance between Allah and His creation and stand and just said, hey, no, we, ar rahman ar ar uh, Allah is not Ar-Rahman. Or, or it has no meaning, Ar-Rahman. And to rise, it, it has no meaning. So they negate those sifat. Because why? Because they were afraid of falling in tashbih. So they went from bid'ah to another bid'ah. They refuted a bid'ah with a bid'ah. Ahlul Sunnah, ala khilaf dhalik, Ahlul Sunnah, they refute innovation with the Sunnah. They refute innovation with the madhab of the Salaf. That's the minhaj of Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah. The Mu'tazila, on the other hand, they also uh, negated the Sifat. And these are very general charts because you'll find uh, various deviations in the creed of these particular groups. But we're just giving you a general picture of how they stood with regards to Sifat. And we'll try to get much more in detail in our study of this treatise, uh, or perhaps on another occasion, get into detail about some who, who were the people who started these creeds. You know, who was Jem ibn Safwan? And, and, and who, who are these people? And how did they go astray? We'll try to get into it, but we want to stick mainly on our treaties of Aqid Tawasadiyya and, and the importance of knowing something about these sects and how they stood with regard to the al asma wa sifat because Aqid Tawasadiyya uh, primarily is about the Tawheed al asma wa sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the, pri pri uh, the primary focus of Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah in this treaties aside from the other aspects of creed. But with regards to Tawheed, this treaty dealt with al asmai wa Sifat, you know, affirming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Sifat in the manner that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed them for himself and according to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because those early sects like the uh, Ahl Tishbi, the Jahaniyyah, the Mu'tazila, and then later the Asha'ira, they all went astray with regards to, the, to, the, to, the, to Sifat. That was the, the biggest thing that they went astray in accordance with. And then they had other deviations depending upon the particular set. But we're just talking about with regards to Sifat because it's relevant to our study of Akhidi Wasafiyya. So in Mu'tazili also, they went astray with Sifat and they negated. Then you have the Ashiris and the Maturidiyya. And they have some differences between them, but primarily their deviance is with regards to Ta'wil that they change the meanings, they give a new explanation 
from a sahih meaning to a meaning based on falsehood. That instead they say, Ar-Rahman, ar ars isto. They say, yes, we affirm that that is an ayat of the Qur'an, those ayats of the Qur'an, we believe in them, we believe it is a sifat, but we don't believe the meaning is as it appears in the Qur'an. We believe the meaning should be changed, or that it should mean, uh, instead of istoa, we should change the letters and say istoa, that Allah, uh, you know, that it, that, and, and change the meaning, that it means to take by force, or to have power, and things like this. But this is not the intended meaning. This is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all throughout the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if that were the meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have made that clear for us. And the Prophet sallallahu would have made that clear for us. And that would have been the tafsir and explanation of the salaf of this ummah. But rather, instead, we find that the, uh, the Asha'ira, who got their creed from the Qulabiyya, and some of the other early sects, that Imam Hassan al Ash'ari, uh, that he had uh, adopted in his, through most of his life, he went through different stages. And the point being is they changed they changed and distorted the meanings from something that, from the correct meaning to another meaning, meaning that fit their intellect. And that's what you find with all of these groups here. They're all referred to uh, in one form or another as the uh, Aqlani, you know, they...